Fractals are objects that are self-similar at all scales. Famous examples of fractals include for instance the Koch curve or the Sierpinski triangle. Also very popular are the Cantor set, the fractal tree or the Bonsley fern. But there is one fractal that clearly stands out here. A set of points forming a structure that reveals the profound complexity and beauty hidden within the world of complex numbers. It is a set that was unknown before the existence of fast computers. A set that demonstrates how complex the solution to a seemingly simple problem can be. I'm talking about a set with infinite complexity, called Mandelbrot set. The Mandelbrot set is generated by iterating a simple quadratic function. This process is then repeated for many complex numbers within a specified range with a given accuracy to produce an image of the set. But what exactly is happening here in detail? Let us start with a brief recap of complex numbers. A complex number is a number made up of two components, a real and an imaginary part. In some sense a complex number is similar to a usual vector in two-dimensional space. But there are some differences regarding the notation and arithmetic operations when dealing with complex numbers. Addition works for instance analogously to vector addition, while multiplication follows a specific formula which is not necessary to understand this video. And according to Leonard Euler, each complex number is also uniquely characterized by its angle and magnitude. Furthermore, the multiplication follows the simple and visual idea that when two complex numbers are multiplied, the angles are added together and their magnitudes are multiplied. And the rules for the addition and multiplication of two complex numbers are basically all we need to understand the construction of the Mandelbrot set. The Mandelbrot set is computed through the generation of a specific sequence of complex numbers. The sequence starts always with z0 equal to 0. The other numbers in the sequence are then generated by the following recursive formula. Zn plus 1 is equal to Zn squared plus c. The complex number c is a number that can be chosen arbitrarily, and it is the number that controls the behavior of the sequence. Furthermore, note that z0 equal to 0 immediately implies that z1 is always equal to c. Therefore c is in some sense the starting point of the sequence, and for every different value of c, the sequence will behave differently. To calculate z2, we first have to square z1, which is always equal to c. We then obtain a complex number with an angle twice as large as the angle of c, and a magnitude equal to the magnitude of c, but raised to the power of 2 as explained before. After adding c to this number, we obtain z2, the third number of the sequence. Here it is common to simply connect the numbers of the sequence with each other. To visualize the Mandelbrot set, we need a grid representing an image. We then select step by step a point that is a pixel from this grid as the point C in the sequence and check if the sequence stays within a certain area. If the numbers in the sequence keep growing, then the number C is not considered a part of the Mandelbrot set and will be colored dark, otherwise it will be colored white. In this manner we obtain this image of the Mandelbrot set which becomes obviously clearer as we increase the resolution of the image. Furthermore, one can also adjust the transparency of each pixel depending on how quickly the sequence diverges from that point to infinity. So in summary, the Mandelbrot set consists of all points C for which the considered sequence stays bounded.
A common question arises regarding the various colors seen for instance in Mandelbrot Zoom videos. These colors are generated using gradient interpolation, which smoothly transitions between arbitrarily chosen colors. Depending on the number of iterations each point takes to escape, it is assigned a color from a palette of newly generated interpolated colors. So basically nothing very complicated. To illustrate this let us plot the Mandelbrot set on the following grid, using these four colors and a limit of at most four iterations for calculating the Mandelbrot sequence. Furthermore, we will need in the following this disk with a radius of 2. If the sequence doesn't stay bounded for a certain choice of C, we will determine how quickly the sequence will escape this disk and assign then a specific color to the pixel corresponding to C. First of all remember that C is always equal to Z1, and all the pixels corresponding to all such complex numbers C, which are already outside of the mentioned disk, are colored grey. All the points C for which the sequence escapes the disk starting from Z2 are colored pink. All the points C for which the sequence escapes the disk starting from Z3 are colored orange. Furthermore, all points C for which all four computed numbers, Z0 to Z3 of the sequence stay inside the pink disk, are marked black. And of course the shape of this set will change if we use more iterations. Let's say for instance we use 7 iterations to calculate the Mandelbrot set, meaning that for each point C we calculate the sequence from Z0 to Z6. The first problem of course is that we don't have 7 colors. But with interpolation we can compute one color between grey and pink, one between pink and orange and another one between orange and black. With the calculation of Z0 to Z6 in the sequence, the previous sequence escapes the disk now after Z5. Because of this we selected the color in our color palette at position 5, which is orange, and assigned it to the pixel corresponding to the point C. To produce a complete and richly colored plot of the Mandelbrot set, one must obviously select each pixel in a given image as the point C of the Mandelbrot sequence and apply the explained procedure to them. And of course this procedure can be repeated with any number of iterations. It is important to note that one can obviously repeat the same procedure as for the Mandelbrot set with other recursive formulas. Here you see for instance what happens to our set if we increase the exponent in the formula. But for now I want to go back to the Mandelbrot sequence, and here I will change the starting point from 0 to A, where A is an arbitrary complex number. Furthermore the number C is now a fixed complex number, and for every fixed complex number C, we can plot all points A for which the sequence stays bounded. If C is for instance 0, then we obtain the set containing all complex numbers whose magnitude is smaller or equal to 1. The points with a magnitude of exactly 1 describe in this case the edge of the set of starting points for which the sequence stays bounded. Such a set is known as a Julia set, named after the mathematician Gaston Julia. 
Currently you are looking at the so-called filled Julia set, because I have also colored the interior white and not just the boundary. Note that the set of points A for which the sequence stays bounded can become extremely complicated when C is not equal to zero. But Julia sets are actually at least as beautiful and complicated as the Mandelbrot set itself. And they are indeed even related to the Mandelbrot set, as we will see later in this video. To understand the origin of the Mandelbrot set, we have to go back to the beginning of the 20th century. During this time the mathematicians Pierre Fatou and Gaston Julia studied the repeated application of complex functions and investigated how the resulting sequences behaved. A field that is known today as complex or holomorphic dynamics. Think for instance about the sequence from before. We started with an arbitrary complex number a, and then we iterated the function f of c equal to z squared plus c, for a fixed value of c. Both mathematicians investigated exactly such sequences, but in a more general setting, and developed in this context even a whole theory around it. Specifically, they were focusing on rational functions that map from c to c and that have a derivative which translates to being holomorphic in the language of complex analysis. Note that in addition to Julia sets, there are also Fatou sets, which are given by the complement of a Julia set. Julia sets have actually a very interesting relation to the Mandelbrot set. Let us take for instance this subset of the complex plane and partition it into equally sized squares. With the recursive formula zn plus 1 equal to zn squared plus c, we calculate the Julia set in every single square, using the center of each square as the fixed number c for the respective Julia set calculation. More accurately, all these sets are actually filled Julia sets, but I will just refer to them as Julia sets. So what we get in the end is this collection of images of Julia sets. And what's now mind-blowing is that if we make the square small enough, we will come closer to the Mandelbrot set. But I have to admit that the images aren't very sharp, even though we used a very fine grid. So what can we do? We simply need to zoom deeper into each individual Julia set. Here for instance, once again on a slightly finer grid. If we make the grid now even finer, we obtain a beautiful high-resolution Mandelbrot set image, only constructed out of Julia sets. So in some sense the Mandelbrot set was already there at that time. But computers with enough computational power to clearly visualize all of this, unfortunately not. And even though other mathematicians had come across the Mandelbrot set later on, they hadn't seen the enormous complexity behind it until Benoit Mandelbrot was able to visualize the set on a more powerful computer in 1980. Today the Mandelbrot set is one of the most popular fractals in the world. 
showcasing the immense beauty and complexity of mathematics. 